Hey folks, and welcome to episode three of my restorative gardening course here. So excited for today's episode because we're gonna be entirely focused on how to go about preparing the soil for the gardening season ahead. And if this is the first episode that you're tuning in for, I'm Jordan and I run a company called Mind and Soil where I'm looking to introduce a million individuals to gardening's mental health benefits. So my hope with this episode and this whole course and program is to help you get your hands dirty and feel just how peaceful, calming, soothing, restorative the garden can be. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and start diving straight into our episode here for today. And that's all around preparing the soil for the gardening season ahead. And so from lesson one, we spent all that time focused on planning out our garden and thinking through how do we want to feel in the garden this upcoming season and what vegetables do we want to be growing in the garden this coming season. And for episode two, we were entirely focused on starting our seeds indoors. And so now a couple weeks later, they are absolutely thriving, beginning to take off underneath the grow lights but it's still a little bit too cold and too early in the season for us to be transplanting them into the garden. So for us to do that, we want to be looking for nighttime temperatures of at least eight Celsius or 10 Celsius as the minimum, as the coldest that it's getting at nighttime. We're gonna do a full episode on how to go about hardening off, transplanting our plant babies into the garden, and that's going to be episode four. But while it is still too cold outside to move our babies out there, it creates this perfect window for us to begin preparing our soil for the gardening season ahead here to ensure that it's full of nutrients, full of microbes, so that when we transplant those babies into the garden beds, they're all set and have everything that they need to absolutely thrive. And I really can't emphasize how important this is. So in 2016, many years ago, when I didn't really know anything about gardening, I just planted things into the garden and kind of just left it to them to begin to grow. And I got a whopping one tomato off of my plants in my garden. So a really, really poor performance from a harvest or bounty perspective. But then you fast forward to this past year and I had an absolutely huge harvest, not just once, but multiple times throughout the season. And I attribute so much of that to ultimately putting in the energy and the effort of building and preparing the soil for the season ahead here. And so as we begin diving into this, the way that I want you to think about it is as a soil bank. So to bring this analogy to life, when we look at the garden and we transplant one of our plant babies into the garden, at the beginning of the season, that soil should be full of nutrients. We've got our nitrogen, our phosphorus, our potassium, plus all the micronutrients in the soil there. But as those plants begin to grow, they need to utilize those nutrients and they're ultimately making withdrawals of nutrients from our soil bank account. But then on top of that, as the season progresses and we have weather and rain, ultimately that's going to remove nutrients from the soil as well. Whereby at the end of the season or even maybe midway through the season, that soil bank account of ours could begin running on empty. There could be too many withdrawals Withdrawals without a deposit or an investment into our soil bank account and that's going to result in our plant babies not thriving and really not having the nutrients that they need to grow to their fullest potential this coming season. So I encourage you to not only think about your soil as like a one-time set it up type of thing but rather an ongoing bank account that we want to be making deposits and investments into so that our plant babies have everything that they need in order to thrive. And so the question then becomes what are the types of investments that we're making into our soil bank account. And to bring this to life, I did a huge experiment last year. So buckle in because I'm going to walk you through what I did here. And so in my backyard, I had a number of raised beds. And what I did to start this experiment was I actually disassembled two of them. I took all the wood apart, took all the soil out, and really just kind of completely removed them from that area so that I had a completely blank canvas to begin working with. Now, once I had that blank canvas, I actually went ahead and started to reassemble those beds, but splitting them from two beds into three beds. And I was putting these basically right back into the same area, but now having a blank canvas or blank slate of soil to be working with. And so that we could begin to see how plants grow in three different environments. So once I had 
reassembled those three beds, I then started to fill each of those three beds up with a different or unique soil. So in the very first bed, I went with 100% compost and all that I was doing was filling this bed back up until there was about eight inches of just pure 100% compost in that bed. And this approach is kind of known as the no dig, no till, very regenerative approach to gardening. It's very low from like a resource perspective and very low from an environmental impact perspective. And the thinking and thought behind this is that because there's so much compost and organic matter in there, um, and as a result of that, so much microbial life, is that each year and each season, by just adding one to two inches of compost, that bed is gonna have all the nutrients and this incredible ecosystem of life beneath the surface for it to be absolutely thriving. So this was the option that I went with for bed number one. Now in bed number two, what I did was that I created a blend of compost and vermiculite. So I took five gallon pails and basically measured out three parts compost or 75% compost, and then another pail for one part vermiculite or 25% vermiculite. And then what I did was I mixed all that up in a wheelbarrow and then started to fill this bed up with multiple rounds of this blend, 75% compost, 25% vermiculite. The reason why I was curious to test this blend out is because it's one that I found myself just gravitating towards using over the last few years. Even though there isn't any research on it or any kind of studies that show that this is a good blend, it was just one that I had played around with a little bit, had been fairly happy with, and wanted to see how it would do side by side with a couple of other soil blends. Now for the third and final bed here, I actually worked with a soil scientist in order to figure out what would be the best option for this bed. So I did a soil analysis to start off, sent that off to the lab, and then with the soil scientist, we interpreted those results to ultimately inform the plan that we would have for establishing the soil in bed number three. And what that consisted of was first grabbing six inches of compost for some nutrients and microbial life, and then sprinkling elemental sulfur all across the bed because we needed to raise the pH of the bed a little bit. It was a little bit low before we started this. And then we actually rototilled these two inputs, the compost and the elemental sulfur, into the native soil that that bed was resting on. And I tried to get down about 10 to 12 inches so that we were able to create a really beautiful homogenous mix of soil here, rather than two distinct layers of the kind of native soil with then six inches of compost on top. By rototilling it together, we now have this beautiful homogenous mixture about 10 to 12 inches worth that we can now be planting into. And so with the three beds established with three unique soils, what I was now able to do was plant the exact same vegetables into each one of these beds side by side to begin to see what difference and what impact does the soil have on how well these plants produce and perform. So the first crop that I put in at the very back were sun gold tomatoes. And in bed number one, because this is the most regenerative and lowest resource bed, all that I did was dig the transplant hole, popped the cherry tomato into that transplant hole, backfilled with the surrounding soil, and then allowed it to grow. But then in bed number two and bed number three, I was using two additional inputs at the point of transplanting. So as I dug the transplant hole, before putting the tomato in, I first grabbed one handful of worm castings and one tablespoon of an organic fertilizer, our 444 superfood, and sprinkled that into the hole. Then I gently massaged that in, and then I put the sun gold tomato into that transplant hole. After that, I backfilled it with the surrounding soil, and then I sprinkled one more handful handful of worm castings and one tablespoon of organic fertilizer at the base of the plant and massage that into the top one inch. So this ensures that there's a great investment of nutrients and microbial life right in the root zone, right where the plant is going to need to be able to access it in order for it to put on its growth. So I did that for bed two and three. And so I took this exact same approach with every other crop that I planted into the bed there. So next up we had some potatoes that I was putting into the ground. After that we had carrots, 
followed by radishes. And then I was able to squeeze some basil into the front of the bed just before we lost light on the evening there. And so from there, the experiment was on and these babies absolutely took off. My garden was so lush, so green, so full of life last year. And the really cool part about this was that as the season progressed, I was then able to begin harvesting each one of these crops and comparing them side by side to see how well each of these soil blends performed. And let me tell you, we got some super interesting results here. So the first crop that was ready were the radishes and they're a very fast growing crop. So I was able to harvest them within 50 days of planting them. And I had an absolutely amazing harvest across the board. So what I did was starting with bed number one, I harvested them out of the bed, cleaned them up and then popped them into a bowl to put them onto a scale to see the size of the harvest here. And so bed number one came out to 872 grams of radishes from just that one bed, which I was absolutely thrilled and blown away with. Now I moved on to bed at number two and harvested those ones out of the bed, cleaned them up, got them onto the scale as well, and that came out to 1,290 grams of radishes from bed number two. So an absolutely amazing performance from that bed, but let's move on to bed number three to see how they did. And so in bed number three did the exact same thing, harvested them, cleaned them up, popped them into the bowl and then onto the scale. And that came out to 962 grams from that bed. So all three of them performed really well, but it actually ended up being bed number two that really outperformed the other two, which was that blend of 75% compost and 25% vermiculite. But let's move on to the next crop here, which was our potatoes. And so a little later in the season, I did the exact same thing. I took a nice sunny, warm evening to harvest each one of the beds and get them onto the scale to see how they did. And so starting with bed number one, and as we can see here, another amazing harvest that was coming out of this bed. This is my best crop of potatoes that I've ever had across the board for all three of them. So once I got these onto the scale, it came out to 1.7 kilograms of potatoes. And this was coming from only three little seed potatoes I planted earlier on in the season. So a really, really great result. Now moving on to bed number two, did the exact same thing here, harvested all of the potatoes out of this bed, was totally blown away again by just how well they were all performing. And I actually needed to get an even bigger bowl in order to get all of these potatoes onto the scale. And so from bed number two, that came out to 3.1 kilograms of potatoes coming from just the three potatoes that I planted earlier in the season. So that's more than a kilogram of harvested potatoes from each seed potato that I put into the ground there, which was amazing. And from there, I went on to bed number three and got some absolutely massive potatoes out of this bed, harvested the entire bed, popped them onto the scale. And for bed number three, that came out to 2.45 kilograms. So once again, bed number two, the combination of 75% compost, 25% vermiculite was the best performing of all three beds. But I was so happy, so blown away with how all three of the beds performed in this instance. And so I wanna go through one more result before we start chatting through how to go about preparing your soil for the season ahead here. You're probably getting some good ideas as to what to do just from these results. But the third crop that I wanna talk about were cherry tomatoes. So at the very back of that bed, again, I planted those sun gold cherry tomatoes and we're gonna hop directly into the results from the three beds here. So starting with bed number one, that came out to a total of 88 cherry tomatoes that I was able to harvest from the two plants that I planted at the very back of the beds there. And then we'll actually jump forward to bed number three here. And from that bed, I harvested a total of 187 cherry tomatoes out of that bed. So I was really thrilled with that. And on to bed number two, which has performed so well in the first two crops that we harvested. And sure enough, bed number two, we harvested 242 cherry tomatoes from only two plants that I had in my garden there. So amazing results from bed number two once again. And as you can probably see, this experiment, it was a lot of work from setting it all up to then planting it up and then tracking and taking care of these plants all through the season. But ultimately, I think that it does a really good job of illustrating how important the soil is 
and how big of an impact some of these different inputs can have on how well the plants perform. So what I wanna to do to begin wrapping up this lesson is spend a little bit of time just chatting through how to go about implementing this in your garden. So the first thing that you're going to want to do if you're establishing a raised bed for the first time or a container is that you're gonna to wanna to make that soil blend and that's going to be again 75% compost 25% vermiculite that I would recommend going with. This has been the highest performing blend that I've been able to experiment and play around with and I've just seen absolutely amazing results with it. So just using five gallon pails or something in similar size, measure out those equal parts of compost and then the 25% vermiculite, mix those up really good and then fill up whether it again is a raised bed or a container with this blend until that raised bed or container is full with your your soil. You've now established an absolutely incredible soil that's going to serve you for seasons and seasons to come here. And then at the point of transplanting your plant babies into the garden, what you're going to do is you're going to dig your transplant hole to put the plant baby into. And once you've dug that transplant hole, you're then going to put one handful of worm castings into that transplant hole, and then one tablespoon of an organic fertilizer, something all purpose or general such as a 444 is a really great option and then pop your seedling out of its seed cell, massage the roots to loosen them up so that they can grow freely into the soil and your raised bed or container now, and then backfill with the surrounding soil. And then once you've done that, go ahead and take one more handful of worm castings, sprinkle that around the base of the plant, and then also grab one more tablespoon of your organic fertilizer, sprinkle that around the base of the plant, and then massage that into the top one inch of the soil, and then give it a really nice and big drink of water to wrap up your transplanting session. When we transplant, that's a fairly traumatic experience for the plant's roots to be going through. And the best thing that we can do to help them or support them as they go through something like that is ultimately to give them a really good big drink of water. That's gonna make it as easy as possible for them to establish and settle in to their new home. And so now that you have established a soil like this, you've got an amazing foundation to just be continuing to make investments into each season ahead. And so as you go through each of the upcoming seasons, rather than ripping the soil up or tilling it, you're just going to leave it as is. It's in a great place now. All that you need to do as you go into new seasons is simply add one to two inches of compost onto the top of the soil there. And that's just gonna be a top dressing. And you're gonna leave it like that. You don't need to rototill it in. You're just going to let it sit on the top of the surface. And that is a perfect investment of nutrients and microbial life to put into the bed as we're going into the gardening season ahead. And now once you have put that in, you would then be into the point of transplanting and you're going to do that the exact same way that we went through with the worm castings and then the organic fertilizer at the point of transplanting. So if you follow those steps and build your soil in that way and approach it as a bank account that we need to be constantly making deposits and investments into, then your plant babies are absolutely going to thank you and they are going to be thriving and you're gonna be having an amazing harvest bounty and yield coming from those plants all season long. And so you might be wondering, well, where do we go from here? And when do I get my transplants, the seedlings that I have underneath the grow lights out into the garden? And so the very next episode of this program here that I'm going to walk you through is all focused on the hardening off process, which is the process of preparing our plant babies for the garden outside, followed by transplanting them into the garden. And what we're also going to cover during that time is how to go about direct sowing or starting seeds for the very first time in your garden space outside. So there's gonna be three pieces that we cover in that next episode or lesson. But for right now, folks, it's the perfect time, the perfect window to be getting out there and preparing your soil for the season ahead. So go get your hands dirty, get that soil all prepped and ready. And when that's done, the next episode will be all set and ready for you to then begin hardening off and transplanting your babies into the garden. Can't wait to catch you on that one. See you soon and go get those hands dirty.